Welcome back to Wicked Quail and Pork Homestead. I have a bag full of seeds to look at with you guys. These are my gardener seeds and this will be my last seed order. I didn't really need that many seeds this year. I have a lot more on hand. We're actually going to use this year's gardening season to use up a lot of my old seeds because I have some really old ones. So we're just going to kind of go crazy probably have way too much produce but that's okay because we do a lot of preserving and we have a lot of friends so we are going to talk about the seeds that I got in from MI Gardener and we are going to talk about what I plan to do with them preserving wise or how we use them in our cooking I feel the most overwhelming part of gardening for a lot of people is what to do with the produce once you have it especially things that they don't typically like from the grocery store I find most vegetables it's just a matter of how you cook with it and what you cook with it I can usually get picky eaters to like a vegetable if I try it a few different ways in my cooking my husband for example these are in absolutely no order I just kind of took them out of the bag we have a good good amount here um, so we will just start getting through them so here I have the golden sweet pea and this is mostly just for snacking any peas that we plant are really just for snacking the kids snack on them all spring I snack on them all spring um, these ones that are flat like this Paul will actually snack on them so that's just kind of for looks and for snacking we have Black Prince Tomato. I have never grown this variety. We're going to give it a try because we like to have a variety of colored tomatoes. I love that each color has a different flavor profile. Tomatoes are something we preserve in a lot of different forms. We do pizza sauce, diced tomatoes, just jars of tomatoes to turn into soups and we eat a ton of fresh tomatoes. Um, every single one of us, except for Kingston's not really a big fan, but me and Paul and Stevie Wren all love fresh tomatoes. Stevie Wren will just stand in the garden all summer and eat them. So we plant a lot of tomatoes. Giant Belgium tomato. This one looks huge. I'm hoping this one's really good for sandwiches. Gold metal tomato. I really enjoy yellow and orange tomatoes. They're my favorite. Paul Robeson. We are used to this variety. We grow it every year just to have a nice purple tomato on hand. And I was out of seeds, so. Peron Sprayless. Hopefully I said that right. Tomato. This is a new one. I also think this is new to MI Gardener's website. I could be wrong, but I think this is a new variety for them. Um, if you guys aren't familiar with MI Gardener, their seed packets have tons and tons and tons of information. Really awesome for a beginner gardener. This is semi-determinate. Isis Candy Cherry Tomato. We've never tried this one either. We always try a couple new cherry tomatoes just because. This is our other variety of peas that we will plant to snack on all spring. This is the Spring Blush Peas. The other thing with peas is that I'll grab them fresh throughout the spring and throw them in stir fries and dinners. This is our favorite onion variety. Uh, they grow really well here. They get super big. They start really easy from seed and we do start all of our onions from seed. So this is the Elsa Craig onion and we've had really good luck with this one. Our onions we preserve them by just dicing them and throwing them in bags and throwing them in the freezer. Some of them I cut into quarters and throw them in bags and throw them in the freezer. And then I take those quarters out and throw them in uh, pot roasts and like corned beef roasts, whole chickens all winter long. It's super quick, super easy. The new thing that we started doing this year is we canned caramelized onions and that has been super awesome to have on hand. Delicata squash just a favorite it stores well it lasts a long time throughout the winter it's delicious 
so I try to grow a lot of squashes. Rainbow Swiss chard. So this is a family favorite. Swiss chard is fantastic. Um, sauteed up with other greens in a stir fry. Great way to get tasty, nutritious greens into your diet is by stir frying it with some good flavors. And then also we take the big stems and cut them up and put them in soups. This one is just cosmetic. It's just for the eyes and it's actually, I don't even really like or care about these, but it's one of Paul's favorite. He has to have them in the garden for whatever reason. This is just a gourd mix. It's kind of fun to have. The kids like to go out and see as they start growing what color they're going to be, what shape they're going to be. So, and they look good on a trellis. This I've been meaning to grow for a few years. Now it is hard to grow things like this here because sometimes our season doesn't last long enough or it doesn't start quick enough. So we'll have to start these indoors even though they don't really like to be transplanted to give them a head start on our season. And that is the table melon. I've heard great things about this. Our kids love melons. Last year we did Minnesota midget melons and they were delicious and they were great because they're like little single serve melons. So we're gonna try a few varieties of melon this year. Long Island Brussels sprouts. We have yet to successfully grow Brussels sprouts. Hopefully we can get it done this year. We're gonna start them pretty early inside because our spring garden season isn't very long before it starts getting hot outside and we've had unusually hot summers. So we're gonna start these fairly early to give them a good start before it gets too hot, which can harm them and make them not wanna grow. Waltham 29 broccoli. So I have also never successfully grown broccoli. It always, always, always bolts on me. So we're gonna start the broccoli like ridiculously early and put it outside ridiculously early, like we're talking the 1st of April. We are in zone five on the line of zone four. So it's still pretty chilly in April, but I cannot get broccoli to not bolt. So we're gonna put it out there super early, take a risk. Either it's gonna work or it's not gonna work. Hungarian hot wax pepper. I actually didn't need to order these. I thought I did, but I do have some on hand. That's okay. These are my favorite, favorite, favorite hot peppers. I grow them just so that I can slice them up and throw them in a pickle brine and put them in the fridge and they stay good in that pickle brine all the way until the next garden season. I still have a jar in the fridge right now and then I just take them out and I put them on eggs or tacos or pizzas or flatbreads or whatever I'm in the mood for, for a hot pepper. These aren't ridiculously hot. They have a really nice flavor and they pickle really well. This is a new one, pepperoncini pepper. So I really enjoy pepperoncini peppers in the jar and I'd really like to make some of my own. So that's what these are gonna be for this year. Mammoth Red Rock Cabbage. So last year was our first successful year growing cabbage. We got a ton of green cabbage and a few small red cabbages. And it was really awesome. I made a ton of sauerkraut, which I'm going through extremely quick. It's fresh sauerkraut is so, so good. Um, the other thing we do with cabbage is we slice it up, blanch it, throw it in the freezer, just pull it out for stir fries or roasts or whatever. And then we also eat a lot of it fresh in a bunch of different forms during the spring, stir frying, uh, cabbage steaks. Now this year we're going to be in a house that has a cellar that stays the perfect root cellar temperature. So we're gonna be able to take some of these cabbages and just hang them from the ceiling down there and keep them fresh for a long time, which is gonna be really cool. Chocolate beauty pepper. So we're just trying a few different um, varieties of bell peppers this year. We really love sweet peppers. We love cooking with them. Peppers are so easy to preserve because like onions, you just slice them up or dice them however you're going to use them, put them in a bag, throw them in the freezer, and they're good to go all winter. That's all you have to do with peppers. It is super easy. There's no reason not to do it if you're a pepper fan. So this is one of the new varieties that we're going to try. Long Island Cheese Pumpkin. Now, we love pumpkin desserts, pumpkin muffins. I make a pumpkin mousse that's really good. 
So we love trying different pie pumpkin varieties. This one was highly rated, so we'll see how it works for us. Golden Acre Cabbage. My favorite variety of cabbage, which is the one that did really well for us last year, was Copenhagen Market Cabbage. So we'll have to see how this one does. I couldn't find Copenhagen Market Cabbage anywhere in stock. So we'll give this one a try and see how it does. It says that this is a really good storage variety, which is exactly what we're looking for. And it actually says on the back of the packet to store it exactly how I'm planning to, which you just pull it out with the roots still intact and you remove the outside leaves and you hang it upside down in a root cellar or a cold storage place and it should stay good for a really long time. Big red pepper. It's another sweet bell pepper. Thought we're gonna give a try. We've never grown this variety, but why not? Now this is one that we've been struggling with for a while. We cannot find a cucumber that stays like nice and uniform and doesn't get all weird on us. Now I know that's partially our fault with watering and all of that but we're really struggling finding a good cucumber variety that does well where we are we're gonna give this one a try it's called the Ashley cucumber and hopefully this one works out a little better for us Waltham butternut squash I've never tried this squash but it had good ratings I know I've heard people say that it tastes great so this will just be another squash for our storage room sweet meat squash this is a favorite so delicious um i only got one last year our squash didn't do very well we were kind of behind on the garden we got the spring garden done really nicely and well and in time and then the summer garden just took us a little longer and we didn't get as much in as we wanted to we were super late planting the squash but we did get one of these and it's so so good ukrainian purple tomato I've had these seeds before and I just lost track of the plants and they died on me. So I look forward to trying this again. Bloomsdale Long Standing Spinach. So we actually eat a lot of spinach with our greens. We love spinach. Again, spinach, just like other greens, tastes great sauteed. Throw it in a really hot pan and cook it down with some garlic and some salt. Any other seasonings that you enjoy in a stir fry type dish. That is a really, really easy way to get your greens in. As far as freezing spinach, it can be blanched and frozen fairly easily. Aunt Molly's ground cherries. So these are really just for eating. The kids really like these. Everybody I know really loves these. I'm not a fan. I just, I don't see what's so special about them, but the kids really like them. Unfortunately, these are like tomatillos and you plant them once and then they're all over your property for forever. They just keep coming back. But the kids enjoy them, so I did grab some. Round zucchini. The first time we grew this was last year and it was fantastic. We would go out, pick them. We would cut the tops off or even cut them in half if they were a bigger one. Take all the guts out, stuff them with meat and mushrooms and any other vegetables we had on hand. Make a nice stuffing and put that inside of them and cook them down till they were super, super tender. And it was just one of the most fantastic meals we had all summer long. So we're gonna plant a lot of these this year. Last thing we got from M.I. Gardener this year is just Detroit dark red beets. It's not as lost. Oh yeah? I preserve beets in a few different ways mostly just canned. I do half of them pickled and half of them just plain canned and I eat a jar of pickled beets at least one jar a week. So, so good. And then just the plain canned beets are nice when you're not looking for that pickly flavor. The greens we're not really a huge fan of but they're great for the livestock. Uh, the pigs love them. The chickens love them. I have to have plenty of beets this year because I go through so many pickled beets. So that's it for this short little seed haul. I hope that gave you guys some ideas. I hope you're getting your seeds in and you're excited about it. I can't wait to start gardening. Thank you for joining us. I will talk to you guys soon. Happy homesteading.